And wallahi, today I'm here to tell you that no one is free from what I'm talking about. There are those who are, and again, I hate using the term religious because who defines who is and who isn't religious. Today we've become so shallow in our understanding that the bead makes you religious. Or that the hijab makes you religious. <laughs> Such a shallow understanding of our deen. But be it as it may. Today you have those that are supposedly religious, active on deen. He's supposed to be a da'i. Many of us, alhamdulillah, we've been praying for 10, 15 years on deen, mashallah. People look at you as an active person. And deep down in our hearts, in places we don't talk about. In our hearts, we feel that Allah Azza wa Jal, He owes me a favor. That Allah owes me something. That, hey, look at me. I've been praying for 10 years. All these people doing haram, looking down at the people around you. Alhamdulillah, I don't do what they do. I pray, I fast, I read Quran, I do. <laughs> Shalom, everybody. Peace of Christ to all of you. I hope all of you are doing uh, good and well. Here you see the stupidity and how they contradict themselves. This is the same guy who keeps saying, if you don't wear hijab, you are a Muslim. If you don't pray, you are a Muslim. If you don't do hajj, you are a Muslim. If you don't fast Ramadan, you are a Muslim. Now he's saying to them the opposite. <laughs> This is the this guy. He always try, uh, you know, like he make a speeches about you, and he put you down. But he forgot that he is the one is wearing a beard. To show you that he is a religious, he is the one who scream at people, telling them what's right, what's wrong, because he think he is better than them. You see, everything he is doing is the opposite of what he's asking people not to do. <clears throat> Am I heard? No sound? Oh, why there's no sound? Hold on. Uh, for me, it's working fine. Anyone hear me? Do you hear me? No sound. Um, uh, does it make sense? It might. <clears throat> hmm. uh, people in Rumble, you hear me? Okay, it's working in Rumble, not working in. Hmm, I wonder why. Okay, my mic here it says it's working. <coughs> All right, let me go to my setting in uh, Discord. One two one two. Yeah, here it's working. There's no doesn't make sense, you know. That doesn't make sense. And it's working fine, the rumble. <coughs> okay, output, multi, input. Yeah, it's working fine. I am testing the microphone. Okay. If I exit, is that will close the everything? Uh, 
let me exit in uh, Discord and see. <coughs> quit. Okay, we quit Ramble. Sorry, I mean uh, Discord. We log in Discord again. We go to our server again. And then we go to stage. Suppressed. You don't have a permission to speak in this channel. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, let us log off. <coughs> oh boy <coughs> all right my mic is working here okay so now if I go and then we go to I don't know what happened maybe somebody uh, playing with us doesn't make sense it says my mic is suppressed The second I enter, we lose sound, we lose the microphone. <coughs> okay, let's see. Mm. Go to server setting admins. I know it's wrong. And now if we start our computer, that will stop my broadcast to ramble. Let us try again. All right, am I heard now? Maybe now it's working. All right, that's good, that's good. <coughs> I had to use the two verses from the Quran, <coughs> which it says, curse me Allah, and it worked. All right. Uh, so we you know like we were playing the video of this idiot you know who will give people speeches about right and good but he is the most hypocrite person ever he lived in England and in a, in a country where everything is against Islam is permitted and he is scolding people about what is right what's wrong and he grow beard he dressed like you know like Arab 
but he is telling them, if you do that, you are not a Muslim. So what make a Muslim a Muslim? Do we have any Muslim here to tell us what make a Muslim a Muslim? Anyone? Any Muhammadan can tell us? We have a Muslim here. I said, can God come as a fire? That's a good question, Mr. the Muslim guy. Do you, you like to join us? Muslim Paradise? Do you want to join us? To join? <coughs> Hmm? Who is a Muslim can answer this Muslim? This Muslim is asking question, can God come down as a fire? Okay, Muslim Paradise. The mic is yours. Go ahead. Paradise, the mic is yours. Hello. Well, it's very normal for him not to be able to talk. As you know, Allah in the paradise, he have to come down to the lower heaven so he can hear us. So he don't hear me now. He is still in paradise. If his God cannot hear you unless he go down in the third part of every night, how he can hear you? He is up in the seven eleven heaven. <clears throat> Are you there, paradise? We are not muted. How is my voice, people, in, in Ramble? Is it good? Hmm. Paradise, are you going to talk or are you are going to sleep over? <clears throat> Mr. Paradise? Okay, Paradise is taking a taken a nap. We will disconnect him then. All right. He cannot hear me. He did not talk. You did not even use the mic. I just muted you. Okay, and you are now not muted. Go talk. You are not muted. You are muting yourself. It is you who mute yourself. You need to click push to talk. <clears throat> well, look like this Abdul is not. Uh... Do we have any Muslim? He function. Any, any Mohammedan, he function, he know what he's talking about. Most of Muslims actually didn't know what they are talking about. They say things, they didn't know what they are talking about. In fact, Muslims do not know even what Islam is about. Any Mohammedan want to give us a speech? How we can go to paradise? What is required to go to paradise? I want to have those women. I'm hungry. Like right away, I, I don't want to even talk to anybody in paradise. Right away, I want to go to the bedroom. Any Muhammadan want to tell us how we can go to paradise? Anyone? Hmm. Anyone? Mayday, mayday, mayday. Who want to help the Christian to go to the Muslim paradise? We want to go for the weekend. We want to see what Muslims would be doing there. 
what exactly the activity in the paradise of Allah like let us imagine in the paradise of Allah there is a gym what Muslim they do in the gym of Allah for sure you have to be wearing your long dress just remember hmm? actually there's a video as long as we mention this there's a video it's called the description of paradise description of paradise in so-called the Dean show if you watch it actually I, I played even this uh, this uh, video I played it in uh, when I was doing some seminars uh, in many countries one of them is the Philippine people die laughing literally <coughs> go paradise what do you want to say paradise is jumping you know is uh, in and out in and out let us share the screen with you okay are you going to talk paradise or you will not you are not muted go ahead <coughs> if you don't talk I'm going to boot you and I will ban you because obviously you are playing games so I will give you one minute to talk otherwise I'm going to not only block you I'm going to one two three all right you are going to be blocked bye bye don't try to waste my time I don't I'm not a kid like you so let me share share with you this video about the Muslim paradise and I challenge any Muslim to say that this is not the most funny, stupid paradise ever. So are we here together? And let us make it uh, available for people in uh, Rambol too. All right. So now this is the D show. And this guy from Egypt, supposedly he have a PhD in Hummus. You know, those are the same as Hamas. You know, the BHD mean nothing. You don't that you think BHD if you think he is knowledgeable. But it's BHD in Shishkabar. So now he is they inviting him supposedly. Uh, and right away after he make the video, by the way, the interview, he went to the hospital because he wanna stay in America, he don't want to leave America. You see, Egypt is the land of uh, Islam, Alhamdulillah, but they, he was desperate to stay in America. And he made himself sick so he would extend the visa. Anyway, so Listen carefully for the description of Paradise, brother. On the Dean Show, we're here to talk about Jannah. We're going to get straight to the topic. Uh -huh. What is Jannah? What is Jannah? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu ala Rasulillah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? You know, Ketira, tell us more. La. Uh, it's a beautiful question actually because all of us longing for Jannah yeah. the paradise some people call it paradise in English some people call it garden in English uh, we say Jannah the meaning of Jannah something unseen you cannot see the world for example the baby in the womb of the mother as you notice here this is not an Arabic word by the way have nothing to do with Arabic so even their paradise is stolen from other languages continue we call it Janine that means you cannot see the baby the paradise the paradise because you cannot see the paradise let's call it jannah also that means something unsee jinn jinn this you cannot see jinn for sure there's no question about it is not an arabic word this is why like we have a battle of legions long before islam about genie the genie you know it exists in persia and in india long long before islam evil you cannot see the call it jinn so the word Jannah from something we cannot see right now surrounded by something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us. And the Jannah, Allah prepared the Jannah himself by his own hands. How do we get to Jannah? Because That's a good you, know question. What? you know, people, we need motivation. And right. this is what we're all striving for. We're striving for the old. Did you hear it? We need a motivation. 
we need a motivation so they don't worship Allah all the idea the whole idea of this garbage cult is about reward they don't believe really in God I will tell you why you should follow this God doesn't matter if he is stupid he is good he is bad don't you want to get this if you want to get this do this you see he's not trying to explain his God they don't know anything about him but it's about motivation tell us more about the motivation ultimate prize how do we get to that ultimate prize <clears throat> Jannah it is uh, the key in your hand uh -huh. of course everything is by the will of Allah uh -huh. but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he give us the key in your hand but of course everything is in the hand of Allah <laughs> isn't it the Muslim believe in destiny anyway isn't it your prophet he says a person he do the work of the people who go to heaven and then what is written by Allah overcome what is what he is doing and he go to hell what those people are talking about all right let us skip a little bit of this is uh, details about how to go to uh, Jannah because you have to do jihad hate the Christians let us see uh, Jannah, what it is. The true Jannah, because the Jannah is beyond what you are hearing. Really? You not even imagine, you cannot even describe or, or think what is. I want you to take a note. He just said, you can't even describe or think what is heaven. You can't even describe it. You can't even think about it. And look what he will say two seconds after. The Jannah. Uh, before, let me describe something beautiful about your castle. Oh? A second ago he said nobody can nobody can imagine what is Jannah nobody can describe for you what is Jannah and now he is describing for you the house in the Jannah <laughs> the voice in the you know is uh, soft okay hold on let us see why it is soft mm. give me a second so you guys you don't hear him very good you don't hear the guy very good? The the people in Discord. No, no, the, the, the video, the video. Ah, okay. Hmm, let us see why. All right, all right. Let us try to fix this. Okay, I will change the output in my uh, here. Okay, what if we make it here? Let us see. All right, I'm going to play it, and you tell me, guys, if uh, if this is sound better. All right. Your cast. Let me uh, put the volume up. All right in the Jannah. Is it better now? So beautiful. Your castle in the Jannah has four doors. You okay, good. So guys, <clears throat> I will go back a little bit in case you didn't you did miss it. He said, nobody can describe for you how the Jannah look like, brother. Your eyes, your ear, never heard of something like that. Never, never. Listen carefully. You see, Fil Jannah, in the paradise, there is no such eyes can even see something like the Jannah. Not even the ears, you cannot even hear about the true Jannah because the Jannah is beyond what you are hearing. You not even imagine, you cannot even describe or, or think you cannot. about the Jannah. You cannot. Uh, before, let me describe <laughs> something beautiful about your cat. <laughs> All of this introduction, nobody can describe for you. You can't imagine. You can't even think about it. It's impossible, brother. And now, let me describe for you what in Jannah. And now, we will talk to you about your castle. I will have a castle. Why? There's an enemy there who will attack me. What, what castle? <laughs> okay, tell me about the castle. Go ahead. Castle. <coughs> your castle in the Jannah. It's something so beautiful. Your castle in the Jannah has four doors. You enter from one door. I was thinking I will enter from four doors at the same time. This is what I do in my house. 
How in the world? Look at the design of the house of Allah for you in heaven. There's four doors, brother. You enter from one door. And remember, nobody can describe for you the heaven. They even have the map of the house. <laughs> nobody can describe the heaven. But now we have even the map of the house <laughs> and every details about the doors. Okay, we enter from one door. What about the other four doors? What happened? Tell us about them. And one door or one gate, uh -huh. your servants from all kinds of servants would come and enter to help you. You have six. One door for the servants. Hold on. As long as my servants are inside my house. Why the servants entering from that door? This is the out door, outside door. Like what? And how many servants they will enter the house, please? 70,000 servants in the paradise, in that castle. 70,000. 70,000. 70,000 servants for me. Making sandwiches for me. Falafel and hummus for me. Hello. 70,000 little boy. None of them is a cowboy. All of them they are serving me. Only on me alone. All they come from one door. What the heck is that? So beautiful. So amazing. Who can resist this? And by the way, his prophet, he said in different hadith, the lowest reward is 80,000. And this is how you know that Muhammad is a fraud. Muhammad cannot maintain the number. For the same, for the boys, one place, he, and he said the lowest reward is 80,000. Continue. So 70,000. Okay, why I need 70,000? I mean, what they will do exactly? 70,000 little boys. Any Muslim can tell us? Not 17, no, not 17. 70, 70. 7, 70. 7, 0. 0, 0, 0. Okay, not 17. What 17? Nobody will go to heaven if, if Allah, if it's only 17. Are you kidding me? Okay, so, and the guy, this guy, by the way, this white man, he is a convert. He is a stupid American convert. 70,000. I mean, look at this stupid guy. How in the world this idiot he converts to such a religion? So we would have 70,000. Huh. Okay. Your servants from all kinds of servants would come and enter to help you. You have 70,000 servants in the paradise, in that castle. 70,000. 70,000 in that paradise. Shake, shake your head. This. Imagine. And one door. Yeah? There's one door you enter, one okay. door your servants, uh -huh. and one door uh -huh. there is a special angel will come to you every Friday. Every Friday? Every Friday. Hold on, what is today? Tuesday. Oh, sister, man, I have to wait now. Wednesday and Thursday. I'm losing my patient. There is a door. There's, listen, listen. I mean, everything is organized in this heaven. There's four doors, one for your slave boys, 70,000, one for you, and then there is one door for the angels. Every Friday, look, I mean, how it is very well managed. So every Friday the angel come, and what he do? There is a special angel will come to you every Friday. Every Friday, uh -huh. they come and they visit you on the Friday. You hear echo? I don't know what to do. I mean, if I don't... Uh, okay, you hear echo here in Rambo? Where you hear echo? You hear echo here? What is the echo? In Discord or in Rambo? In Discord. So what I would do, I mean, if I don't... You told me you cannot hear. Okay, let me lower the sound, maybe. I don't know what to do with you guys. You're driving me crazy. Believable. Should I ask Allah to curse you now? Huh? 
do you know what happened to when somebody came to Prophet Muhammad is complaining that uh, uh, drinking honey is not working he told him your stomach is lying okay let me tell you now the truth your ears is lying okay as simple as that okay I did lower the sound so maybe we'll not have a sound coming from the microphone more let us see now it's going to work let me know have a small card in his hand is it better now? angel have a beautiful small card in his hand is it better now? what is written you enter from one door uh -huh. and one door or one gate your servants from all kind of servants would come and enter to help you. You have 70,000 servants only in the paradise in that castle. 70,000. 70,000 in that paradise. Imagine this. And one door, this one door you enter, one door your servants, and one door there is a special angel will come to you every Friday. Every Friday. Every Friday, uh -huh. they come and they visit you on the Friday. Yeah. Have a small card in his hand. Look. That angel have a beautiful small card in his. Who is the first one who created business card in the world? Now you tell me the European. Just lie. Just lie. Every Friday. The angel he come and he have a card to you for eternity every Friday brother what this card saying tell us his hand and guess what is written in the in the card what it is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala message from Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Abdi in that card Abdi that is my servant. In another riwayah called it Tirmidhi, Abdana. This is my, my honored servants. Ishtaqtu ilayka. I miss you. Look at the love. Fazurni. And so come and visit me. Allah send you this. The creator <laughs> of the heavens and the earth, he's calling. Imagine. Imagine. The, creator imagine. Of the, uh, the, cre uh, the one he created to create everything. Yeah. He said, come and visit me. We get excited if, say, the president was saying, hey, look, I want to have a meeting with you. <laughs> this imagine, is the creator. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself send you this message with a small card. My servant, stuck to, I miss you. Come and visit me. Unbelievable. The fourth door, you will go out from your castle to visit. The present of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So listen guys, there's one door only for the angels to deliver mail. One door for you to get into your house. One door is for the servant. One door to exit to visit Allah. So the angel he come to you every Friday. He give you a card and Allah is saying to you, I miss you honey, Habibi. Come and visit me. Now you go from that door and now you open that door. What will happen? Surprised. The moment you put your right foot outside the house. Remember, you have to put your right foot. If you put your left foot, you are in hell now. Don't ever miss. Don't make such a mistake. Your right foot. No way. No left foot. Right foot. It's important. Very important. The second you put your right foot in the uh, within the door, what will happen? Uh, tell us, tell us. Will go out from your castle to visit the present of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the moment you put your right foot outside the house, there mm. is a rain of musk, musk, a beautiful perfume, will cover you. I don't know. You must be smell like shit. Excuse me. To need Allah to cover you by musk, like, I mean, what do you mean? Isn't you Muslim, you say that in the heaven nobody sweat, nobody get dirty. Why Allah want to shower you by musk? What, what's wrong with your smell? So the second you open that door, they, they, they spray you with the musk? You must be smelling so bad. Otherwise, why they want to spray you with this musk? To make you smell better, you must be stinky. Continue. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare around the throne. He the throne subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh -huh. Karasi. Chairs. Chairs. Front of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really? 
and we every care every chair assigned under your name and his name and her name so now there is according to muslim now there is 1.6 billion so now the abdul every friday every one of them he opened his door he found himself entering the hall where allah he said and now it is time to find your chair because remember every chair it's written on it your name you cannot sit in someone else's chair <laughs> chair <laughs> i mean do you see the stupid idea how those billions they will find their chair by the time i find my chair allah will be dead let us assume there's only one billion muslim just one billion so imagine you enter a hole and there's a billion a chair one billion a chair and now you need to find which chair have your name to sit on it. Obviously, Muhammad, when he fabricated this story, he was talking to some Muslim, they are maybe 10, 20. <laughs> this reminds me of my cousin. He went to the movie. He came back from the movie. We told him, hey, Hamad, what happened in the movie? He said, oh, oh man, it's good, it's good. Man, leave me alone, man. I said, why? He said, by the time I finished saying Assalamu Alaikum and shaking hands, the movie was over. And this is what will happen to the Abdul. You know, we have tradition. You have to say Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum. As like, sit down, man, watch the movie. Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum. Shake hands, Assalamu Alaikum. So the movie was done by the time he finished shaking hands. Uh, but now we have different story. We have a one billion chair at least. I mean, the Muslims, we have to calculate the Muslims now, the Muslims 100 years ago, the Muslims 200 years ago. So we are talking about billions. How you will find your chair if everybody have his name on it? Anyway, just let it go, man. Muhammad is, uh, you know, he say what he say. Hmm. And we see the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the angels. The notice here, he did not say we see Allah. He said we see the throne. <laughs> so did you come to visit Allah or to visit the throne? What is Allah? Do you notice what he said? He did not dare to say we see Allah. He said you see the throne of Allah, the chair. So now the party, all of us is around the chair. There's nobody on the chair. Allah is not there. I mean, that's it. Okay, and what happened? By the way, if there is any Muslim, he is so much convinced with this uh, stories, uh, feel free to join us. No problem. All right? Feel free to join us. Go, Abdul. It's so beautiful, Eddie. Just to think, Allah, the creator of the heaven and the earth, is said to, to, telling the angels, Ya malaikati, my servants. Uh -huh. ibadi, mm. They are my servants. Ahibai, my beloved one. Oh. Ahli, my family. Really? Suddenly Allah is a man. Suddenly Allah and the Muslims as a family. You see, you see the hypocrisy? It's not befitting to Allah to have a son. But now it's befitting to Allah to say those are my family. And where are those stories coming from? Is that from the Quran? Is that a true story? Do we have any Muhammadan? You Muslims are from the family of Allah now? So how come it's not befitting to have a son, not befitting to have a, to be a man, not befitting to, to have a wife, not befitting, not befitting? Now suddenly you became, uh, uh, you know, body. Allah became your body. What is missing is to play chess with him. So Allah, he said to the angels, what? Feed them, feed them. No, no, feed them. They will say to him, Allah, please. No, we ate falafel already. No way. You have to eat. Give them, give them more. 
Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Akrimuhum, honor them. See, Arab, we already honored with that place. Is more honored. Atrimuhum, feed them. See, Arab, we ate. This is different. Hey guys, I don't know what to do. I, if I, if I let the video play directly, obviously Discord is not doing a good job to make the audio go through to you, you know, directly. So this is why you have, you are hearing the sound from my microphone and from the Discord, and that making an echo. All right. Lower the sound a little. Okay. What Fun about food. now? Ashribum, give it a drink. This is for a drink. Is it better and now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood, David alayhi salam. Stand up, my servant David, Dawood. Recite to them as Zabur, the son of David alayhi salam. The corrupt one or the, the good one? So, guys, now in the party. The first singer in the party for tonight is Dawood, David. And David, he will sing for them as Zabur. Like, hold on, hold on. He will sing for them the whole book. I don't you Muslim, you believe that this is a wrong, long book? He will sing for them the whole book? Okay. Maybe you mute the speaker from my computer. I'm not using the speaker from my computer. I'm using a speaker from the, when I had the speaker of my computer, uh, I have a software which leak, uh, it take the sound from all direction, like to send it to you. So I, uh, I switch. Okay, hold on, let me try this. You guys are making me, they're giving me a headache. That's it. Okay, let us do this. If we go, and we make the sound go to the computer, let's say. Uh, input, output. All right. Okay, let's try this. Maybe that will help. Now, tell me, is it better? The Salam. Psalms? The Psalms will be recited by David, alayhi salam. David, prophet. the Prophet, David. Is it better now, or it's too loud? David, Prophet, David, alayhi salam. And imagine when David السلام, reciting, the birds will be like reciting after him. The river will stop. Imagine this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling those people, my servant, have you ever heard the beautiful more than that? Okay, what about Rumble? And he said, Hey guys, in Rumble, is the sound good now? Tell me if the sound is good in Rumble. Is, by your glory and your power, ya Allah. We never heard beautiful more than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell those people, لا أسمعنكم أفضل من ذلك. So now David, he did sing, but you know what? Oh, I'm going to make you hear something even better. Who, guess who is the best singer in the world come number one or number two? The first one who sing is David. He was so good. But Allah, he said to them, no, 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 hold on. I'm going to introduce for you the best American idol for the world. By your glory and your power, ya Allah, we never heard beautiful more than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell those people, لا أسمعنكم أفضل من ذلك. I will make you hear more beautiful more than that. Listen, Allah Azza wa Jal telling Prophet Muhammad, Who is the second singer? It turned to be Muhammad, his voice is beautiful. Like, what the heck? Allah want to show them and he want to make them hear the best voice in the universe. He said, you heard this? See? They said to him, we never heard something like this speaking about David. Oh man, his voice is so good. He said, no, 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 no. You, you heard nothing yet. Just wait. Muhammad, come here. Come here, Muhammad. Show them. Muhammad is very humble, by the way. He said, please, no, Allah, I don't want to sing. You know, I don't like to be a famous celebrity. You know, like, uh, uh, you know, should I wear a bikini on the stage or what? More than that. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell those people, لَأُسْمِعَنَّكُمْ أَفْضَلَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ I will make you hear more beautiful more than that. Listen. Beautiful. Allah azza wa jalla telling Prophet Muhammad. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Stand up Muhammad. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Recite to them. They cannot even say his name without saying صلى الله عليه وسلم. صلى الله عليه وسلم. صلى الله عليه وسلم. You see, they say the name of Allah without saying anything. The second they say Muhammad, they have to say a couple of words praising him. Allah pray on him. سورة طه. How much we love the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. How much we follow the steps of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. How much we dream about him صلى الله عليه وسلم. How much we read about him صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now, now he's in front of you. No way. Hmm. Okay. I thought singing is haram. It turned to be that the entertainment in heaven is nothing but singing. <laughs> so why we don't sing in earth? As long we can sing in heaven. Anyway, continue, continue. Nice story. Now he's reciting to you Surah Taha. Oh boy. Allah Azza wa Jalla will tell you and tell you all of us, my servant, Ya Ibadi. هل سمعتم أفضل من ذلك؟ Have you ever heard beautiful more than that? سي يا ربي وعزتك وجلالك By your glory and your power We never heard beautiful more than that They just said the same thing about David But now Muhammad he won Muhammad is the winner It turned to be Muhammad His voice is better than David We, more better. we never heard of this more than this Okay And now what will happen? أس لأسمي عنكم Oh no. I thought the party is over. Muhammad is the last one to sing. Guess who is the third one is going to sing and enter the competition? Anyone knows? Who is the third singer? Allah? Allah Himself. Allah will start singing for us. Go ahead. I will make you hear and see more beautiful more than that. And we will see the face of Allah subhanahu Oh boy. So until now we did not see Allah. Now we will see Allah. Not Allah, we will see his face. <laughs> Look like the face of Allah cannot be activated until he starts singing. Imagine, we pray for him. Mm -hmm. We fast for him. For him? You pray for him or you pray for heaven? I mean, the whole program about how to go to heaven. Are you really praying for him? Are you really fasting for him or you are fasting to go to heaven? Hypocrite. As for him, we give the care for the sake of him. We do everything good for, for him. And you didn't see him? Now you see his face. Your face. Your face will be so bright. Your face will be so bright. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recite to you Surah Al-Rahman. Ya Allah. La 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 I am Allah la 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 This is what we will do for eternity ever Friday? Muslims. This is what we will do for eternity every Friday. And look how stupid the story. Next Friday, the same thing will happen. You open the door, you will be showered by musk. You enter the room, you look for your chair between the billions of chairs. You sit. Allah will call David to sing for you the Zabur, the Psalm, the book of Psalm. He sing it. Allah will ask you the same question he asked you last weekend. Have you ever heard better than this? You will say, no way. Nobody. Oh, mommy, mommy, blue. Oh, mommy, blue. Nobody. And then the second singer, Muhammad. Hey, Muhammad, come. And Muhammad will sing the chapter of Taha. And Allah will ask you after he finished, have you ever heard better than this before? You stupid Abdul, you just heard it last weekend. What do you mean you say, you keep saying, we never heard better than this? 
you just heard you said the same about David so every uh, every weekend for eternity we have a three singers David Muhammad Allah and who is the winner the first praise the prize for Allah second is Muhammad uh, the third is David a Muslim Isa is not invited Isa Musa no what about Abraham oh, I forgot because supposedly according to Muslim David his voice is very nice so this is why he was only invited. They did not invite Isa and Abraham. Only people with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, with nice voices. <laughs> Where is the rest? <clears throat> what the heck? Abraham will not be singing? And he is the father of the prophets? That's so weird. Imagine yourself, you are Abraham, and Allah inviting every Friday David, Muhammad, and himself, and you are not invited to sing on the stage. Hmm. Allah. La. Ar Rahman. Uh -huh. Reciting Surah Ar Rahman. Look at his eyes. I mean, look at the fake, you know, the fake act. Al Rahman, Allah, his name is Rahman. He is reciting the chapter of Al Rahman. That's amazing. That's beyond amazing, brother. I mean, even Allah, he sings the Quran. He Muslims, why Allah is singing the Quran? Any Muslim can tell me? In the way you cannot even imagine this. For sure. We dream about it. Uh -huh. yeah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us, my servants, have you heard or saw more beautiful more than that? <laughs> <laughs> this is the God is asking his slaves, have you ever heard better than my voice? Hmm? Let us be honest here. First of all, who dare to say to Allah, I heard. Secondly, what the point of this stupid thing? What the point of every Friday for eternity inviting me to hear the same singers, the same song, and the same place? Isn't this the most boring, stupid heaven? Any Muhammadan? Imagine every Friday we meet. Us, just us, you know. And then every Friday we have three guys only. They stand and they sing. Let us say they have a nice voice. Every Friday, but the same song. Every Friday, for eternity. Any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan would like to join us? Mayday, mayday. So now Allah, He finished singing. What is next? Your power and glory, we never see or heard of you. Sure. Say, Ya Ibadi, my servant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be in my Jannah. I will, ولا أسخط عليكم أبدا. I will never give you a hard time. Say Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the beginning. He said to the angels, هؤلاء عبادي. They are my servant. حرموا على أسماعهم القناة. Those prohibited the false talk and the music and the songs on their ear in their ears. Now I'll make him hear beautiful more than music and the songs. Prophet David. Ah, this is the best music in the world. So music in the earth is from Satan, music in Allah's house is not. 
See? And by the way, have you ever heard of a Muslim don't listen to music? Based on this, by the way, according to Muhammad, anyone who listens to music, Allah will make the earth swallow him and he will change his look to a pig and a monkey. You know that, right? We can show you the reference. <clears throat> Look at this. People among my nation will drink wine corned by other name. Eh? Seven up. And a musical instrument will be played for them and singing girls will sing for them Allah will cause the earth to swallow them up and will turn them into monkeys and pigs now I understand why I look around I see weird stuff hey Muslims Muhammad he said this sentence 1400 years ago Muslim countries around the world they watch movies they watch music they dance they have parties if there is one of you Allah he made him a pig or a monkey or he made the earth swallow him anyone yeah even you have Bachabazi you bring boys and you make them dress like girls and then you have sex with them how come Allah don't keep his promise it was an empty threat right who is the Muslim Allah he made him a pig or a monkey for listening to girls or drinking alcohol so Muslims they follow Allah they don't drink alcohol but they have sex with the children they have no problem to flirt and to sleep with the women she is married like Muhammad did but the music is haram forbidden hmm. do we have any Muhammad would like to join us anyone Shall we continue the movie? Or you guys are bored? Oh, this is the guy who tells us why Aisha she killed Muhammad. That is different drama. <laughs> this is, remember the Shia guy, he was here yesterday and he told me about this guy and I told him, let him come and debate me. So this video here, by the way, it's called Scandals Aisha Killed the Prophet Muhammad, chapter one. He explained to you why Aisha is a very filthy woman and they call her a whore and they claim she killed Muhammad. Let us go back to the description of paradise is more entertainment. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. This is indeed beautiful. We're going to take a break and we're going to continue on. Talk what you will do with drink camel urine in the break? About Jannah, paradise. You don't want to go away. Don't go right away. Okay, the end of the break. Is this your paradise? If look at the pictures. Man, this is paradise? A collection of pictures from the internet? What the heck? I, th I saw a picture from Indonesia too. There will be there all that soul could desire. All that eyes can, could delight in. Do you see here, by the way, the word soul? Nafs means soul, yeah, you know, but it's like what you what you what you desire in, in in any way, sexually, food. But when this God he made a promise like this, anything you desire. What if somebody he is a gay? Because remember, gays will go to heaven in Islam. They will go. Allah He said in the Quran, Allah forgive all sin except one, which to worship someone with Him. That's it. 
That's it. So now you are a gay, and Allah, he grant you whatever you wish. Whatever you wish, you will have it. So what a gay he will wish? I ask a Muslim, if you can search on YouTube, you will find it. I told him, what if somebody want to have sex with Muhammad? He said, what the problem? So what if somebody want to have sex uh, with you? So what the problem? There is no, and he keeps saying to me, there is no sin in heaven. There is no sin in heaven, which means you can do whatever you want. No sin, we mean no rules. No rules. Men with men, women with women, men with the children, men, you do anything you want, whatever you wish. And here, by the way, there is something stupid in this, this, in this uh, promise, because if you wish to have, let us say, a sex with the uh, with the women or a man, but it's not their wish to sleep with you. How Allah can grant such a wish? You know what I mean? If I say to you, whatever you, you wish, in order to keep my promise, well, I have to give you whatever you wish. I cannot say there's a condition. Whatever you wish, mean whatever you wish. So now this person, he wished to sleep with this person, but the other person don't wish to sleep with the first person. How Allah can grant both of them wish? When he just said, whatever you wish. Anyway, this is a wish, wish religion. Continue. Look how many verses, brother. Look, they will be adorned therein with the bracelet of gold and wear a green garment of fine silk. Listen to this, Abdul. For me, when I see a man wearing a bracelet, it doesn't sound manly. Seriously. I mean, why in the world a man will wear a bracelet? And why it is important to mention that your bracelet is made of gold and silver? How stupid is that? Does that mean you are rich now? Hmm? What gold and silver? We are in heaven. And you will be wearing, you see here the translation says, a, a garment of fine silk. This is false. It is, it is true you will be wearing a, a silk, but the Quran used the word istabrak. And here you notice the Quran author is an idiot. Istabrak is an Iranian word, Persian word, for a product of silk made in Iran. It's like saying to somebody, I will give you a Gucci. It's a famous brand, you know. How that can be from God? If this Quran written before the mankind, they created this uh, brand. Why Allah copying the name of the brand and He putting it on the on the Quran? And who care? Why even He will be wearing clothing? What what is the clothes for in heaven? Isn't it Allah? He created Adam and Eve. They are naked. And if you are in your house, why you will be here? Nobody allowed to leave his house. In case you do not know, by the way, you cannot leave. In the heaven of Allah, there is one hundred floor. If you live in the first floor, you cannot leave that floor. Period. And you cannot visit anyone. If you are from the higher floor, you can go down to visit the higher, the, the lower floor. But if this is a heaven, there is no sin on it. So what's the point of wearing clothing? What's exactly the clothes for? 
especially everybody having sex non-stop. Here he noticed that he is trying to fool them. Those Arab, they are Bedouin, they sleep in the ground. They never have bracelet of gold. They never have a, a fine silk, only very rich people, they have that. So he's trying to tempt them by money and gold and silver and silk. Plus for sure, vagina. Continue. <clears throat> they will never fail ill. A blow, I like this one. Guys, you will never fail ill or blow your nose. <laughs> Always I am worried about my nose. Let us be honest here. If there is any one of you would like to be in heaven and you blow your nose? Seriously. They will never feel ill or blow their nose. What the connection? Or a spit? What if something go inside your mouth? You don't want. What if you like to do it for fun? I'm forbidden to spit? Is that a reward? Tell us more, tell us more, Mr. Beta 4. What the name of the song? Tell us more, tell us more, Mr. Muhammad Moore. Aha, uh -huh. aha. Uh -huh. The Prophet Muhammad said, The Prophet Muhammad said, not Prophet Muhammad. Ah, okay that a caller will call out in paradise when people enter it. Okay. Indeed, may you be healthy and never be sick again. May you live and never die again. May you be young and never grow feeble again. And may enjoy and never feel sorrow and regret again. Sahih Muslim. <laughs> continue <clears throat> maybe by the way I, I like it when you say may, may like is it something granted by a God or this is may you know because if you go in the Quran one of the stupid things since I was a kid the one of the stupid things I noticed in the Quran is this following word let me show you Asa. <clears throat> Asa in Arabic mean it may be. You will notice how stupid the Quran author is. If you read verse number four here, the, the, uh, number one, the first one in the screen, it says, So fight for the cause of Allah, you are responsible for your, uh, only for yourself. And rose the believers, perhaps Allah will strain the might of those who disbelieve. Perhaps? What? Here you see Muhammad is covering his butt because he is not sure they will win or they will lose. So he said, perhaps. But here, supposedly the one is talking is Allah. Why Allah need to say perhaps for something he can grant it? Is it a granted or perhaps a granted? Right? Any Muslim? And the same goes for any other verses. Look at this. Maybe Allah will forgive them. Who is talking? Allah. The one who is talking is Allah. How you can say such a statement? Here it says, the same, chapter 7, verse 129, chapter 7, 185, 
chapter 9, verse number 102. Chapter 12, verse number... Uh, this is here, actually, it doesn't uh, go because he's telling a story, he's quoting a story. But here, where Allah is talking, uh, here, as an example. Perhaps your Lord will have mercy on you. Who's talking? Allah. So is it granted or it's not? All of those. In chapter 17, verse number 79, it gets even more funny, where it says, Allah, he says to Muhammad, give vigor with it during the uh, part of the night. As an extra prayer, perhaps your Lord will raise you to laudable position. Perhaps. I thought Allah knew the future. I thought this Quran written before Muhammad was created and the Muslim believe in destiny. But why Allah then he's saying perhaps this is not inshallah by the way this is Asa. Asa is different uh, from inshallah. Inshallah mean if Allah will. Here is way more confusing because it, it doesn't make sense. Asa is like it's just a perhaps as it says there perhaps. Which means there's many options nobody knows. But the one is talking is Allah. And this goes for tons of verses in the Quran. Asa. Asa. This one here, when Muhammad he had fight with his wives, and they were striking against him because they found him having sex with the slave girl in their bed. So what Allah he says to the women, if you don't repent to Allah, your heart are already inclined, like you know you became a kafir, a disbeliever, if you repent. If you don't repent, you became a kafir. And if you bond against him, Allah is protector, and Jibreel, and every righteous. And here you see how stupid this is. If Allah is all-powerful, who need the rest? I mean, two women, they fight with Muhammad. And they are not fighting by the sword, or weapon, or missiles. They are just throwing tomato, maximum using their shoes. Hey, women, what do you use when you are married? Anybody can tell us? what women use usually during uh, fighting with the husband like they've been in the country I guess I guess if you are a person a woman living in Indonesia you use coconut no if you live in uh, uh, where if you live I don't know. I mean, that's that's really scary. I mean, imagine your wife, she throw a coconut on you. I, I would never go to Indonesia. Oh, boy. That's really... Whoops. You know? I prefer to fight with the women she live uh, in the in like in mulberry land. Like, she throw mulberry at me. Not coconut. What the heck? Crazy, crazy, you know, those women, Indonesian women. I know I know why everybody in Indonesia have coconut in his house. And I know now why men, they are really like uh, suppressed in Indonesia. He opened his mouth, the coconut either in his head or his mouth. You choose one. Like, well, you, you know? And if you have four wives, that will make them four monkeys. Like, like the coconut coming from everywhere. And the Abdul like, oh, you know, like, you know. And now this is what happened to Muhammad. But there's no coconut there. He was lucky. There is no coconut. Maybe at that time there was a coconut. Remember, this is Saudi Arabia 1,400 years ago. It was like Indonesia before. Like Because Aisha was mature at that time. At the age of six. 
Yeah, I mean, by the way, this is a true story, but I told you, me, myself, I saw a monkey, <clears throat> and this monkey, she was really, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, I don't know, really, how in the world anyone can trust a monkey to be his wife. So this guy, he's a chimpanzee, uh, he married a monkey, and this female monkey, uh, he, you know, like she acted like she is in love with him, like, you know, you know, like, uh, so he slept, and she put her hand under his uh, head, and the guy is like in honeymoon, ah, my wife, honey, you know, and they ate banana and coconut, everything is good. And then when he slept, uh, another monkey, who is really hot, very hot monkey, he came and he blinked for her. Hmm? So when this uh, female monkey uh, let me see if I can show you. I will show you what happened. True story, guys. I mean, I have the first hadith in the top talking about what I'm going to show you more details. I have it in my book, by the way, if you want to read more of the... Of the let us go to the first one, because the, there is there is more details about this story about how the monkey, he seduced her. Anyway, like, okay. So during the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, this is the companion of Muhammad. They don't lie. I saw a she monkey. Listen carefully, she is a she. Make a difference. Surrounded by a number of monkeys. Why? They were all stone in it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse i too stoned it along with them <laughs> look like he was a monkey too how the monkey allow you to get close with the, between them so the monkey now they are stoning the monkey and you get close to them and you join them stoning and what like what they say to you hey brother join us the monkey they are muslim they notice that you are muslim too indonesian indonesian muslims be honest with me. Do you Indonesian Muslim join monkeys in Indonesia to stone female monkey who have sexual intercourse illegally? <laughs> what? <laughs> sexual? <laughs> what the scumbag, filthy scumbag animal monkey? Shame on you. Disgusting. I can't believe it really that this is happening so now you are a monkey yet with all the blessing from Allah giving to you banana and coconut and jumping from tree to tree and you have a red ass what do you do you cheat you sleep around aren't you ashamed What's wrong with the female monkeys? This is why I advise all Muslim men never trust a female monkey. They have a very bad habit. They sleep around. However, if she's wearing hijab, I think this is a different story. <laughs> okay, continue. Let us go back to the description of heaven. Tell us more. <clears throat> hmm. they will not hear there in any speech of commission of sin only boom boom oh they are back they are back discussing Jannah paradise uh -huh. for those that have lived life according to how their creator the creator of the heavens and the earth has told them to live there is a reward and that's paradise and that's mm. what we're talking about today with our guest, Dr. Sheikh Ibrahim Dramali. Tell us, Sheikh, how are the people who enter Jannah, how, what are they going to look like? What are we going to look like? Is it the same body? Is it a spiritual body? Is it a physical body? Uh, in fact, uh, no. No. It will be completely different. Uh oh. Because the moment before we enter the Jannah, yeah? there is two springs. 
Okay, guys, listen carefully. This is very serious. I think things is getting serious. Before you enter the Jannah, what will happen? Are you going to have a spiritual body or real body? Real body? body. Uh, in fact, uh, no, it will be completely different. Because the moment before we enter the Jannah, there is two springs. When you enter the Jannah, there is two springs. And there is like two rivers. One spring of water you drink, <laughs> everything inside you, like hate, like envy, like a transgression. And Allah cannot change their heart, so He give them water, drink. Hey, drink this, uh, drink this fountain. Okay, drink from this fountain. All the hate and anger will come as poop. Poop it out, bread. Everybody, you are coming from the door, please. Drink from this water. Go to this bathroom there. Have you ever heard that hate and anger and those things can go by drinking the water? What isn't it? This is God. He says, "Okay, now they are coming to heaven." Can't he change them? No, he have to give them a drink. Is that a medical thing? Is that a corona? Is that covered by the insurance? Muslims? A drink? Look at this face, how it's open. He's explaining to you the drink and look at his face. <laughs> Anything from you carry it with you from the life, from the dunya, yeah? from the lifehood? We got it, we got it. This is a drink caused the area. Okay, we got it. Be removed. The second and then he moved his hand down to his ass like you removed, you shit it. <laughs> Sorry. You are going to shit all your shit. Disclaimer. In the heaven of Allah, when you arrive, the angel will ask you to drink from the first water and that will make you shit all your shit. And this is the first stage. In entering the heaven of Allah. Shit here is a must. Excuse me, I have to use the word. I'm just explaining, you know, scientifically, scientifically. In a spring of water you drink from, uh -huh. that will make you so bright, so beautiful. So white. And very tall. Man. The second water you drink, will make you so white. You see, they are, they are trying to avoid to say the word white. He keeps saying bright. In, uh, in Arabic, it says it clearly, white. So it will make you so white and so tall. How tall? You will be like 60 feet tall. That's it? 60 foot tall? This is not even the height of my grandfather balls. So now I go to Jannah, I pray to Allah, and now he made me 60 foot tall. Why? Hey, by the way, Muslims, if we stay in our height, what will happen? Size does matter, right? What I mean, why you have to be 60 foot? Oh, because Adam was 60 cubit not 60 foot he's lying by the way Muhammad he says 60 cubit not 60 foot this guy is confused between cubit and and, uh, and foot go ahead continue continue you will be like 30 or 33 years old just like you will be 30 33 years old like who like Jesus Look, what the heck total trans trans transformation so first thing you drink the water, your shit goes, all the shit, you know. Then uh, you drink the second water, you get like zzz, zzz, taller, 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 taller. Stop. Muslims. I mean, they have many stories about the height of Adam. But I have a question which I asked myself a long time ago since I was a kid, which was like five years ago only. Uh, when Muhammad, he said, 
Allah created Adam in his image. See here how he write, he lie. He said in in his video program he says Adam is sixty foot. But do you see here what it says? Can you read with me? Is the is the image clear? Sixty cubit. Sixty cubit. The cubit is what like almost a meter, right? So 60 meter, what 30 meter? In fact, in Arabic it says clearly 60 arms. In Arabic it says 60 arms. Sutuna dhira'an. 60 arms. So as long as Adam, he was 60 arm tall. And the first one who did Hajj to the Kaaba was Adam. So why the Kaaba is so small? So imagine this. I cannot use my pen to draw here because this program capture only the browser, not the screen reading. So the Kaaba is six meters high. So imagine this funny silly thing. It's like having little tiny plastic chair. The one have no back. The one you sit on it like maybe in the yard or you know uh, like those uh, they use it like in uh, some countries women they wash dishes they sit in the ground. So, you know something very low. So this is the Kaaba compared to the size of Adam. Why the Kaaba is so small and Adam is so tall? Shouldn't the Kaaba be something bigger than Adam? Any Muslim? We don't have any Muslim today. I don't know what happened. The topic is very embarrassing. Anyone? Why the Kaaba? It's like having, you know, bring a roll of a toilet paper and put it in the ground. That will be the best way to compare between the size of Adam and the size of the Kaaba. And Adam is going around the toilet paper. Right? And how Adam was kissing the black stone? The black stone in this case would be so tiny, so small, and Adam is so tall, so big. This guy, he have to go in his belly to kiss it, if he can kiss it. Any Muhammadan? Can you debate Nader Ahmed again? Bring him, just for the sake of it. I don't debate them. I don't debate Muslim, by the way. I just, you know, spank them. Now the Rahmat is just a, you know, like the rest. But if you have him, bring him here so we can laugh. I don't mind, you know. You guys are hungry, what I can do? And I know, you want to chew anything. Nadir Ahmad, Zakir Naik, anything I throw at you, you want to eat, eat him alive. I know, I know. I know. Hmm? Yeah. Those people, have they try me once, they never repeat. You know, they go, they will go try their luck with different person, but not with me. That's it. One time, this guy, many years ago on Paltok, he agreed that his prophet had sex with the goat. He said, it's better than your Bible saying, smash the head of the baby. Well, in the Bible, it was the guy praying to God because this is what they did to their babies. So he was praying, God, smash their head. According to uh, this uh, Nadura, his prophet having sex with the goat is way better. Anyway. <clears throat> Any Muhammadan? 
Shall I play for you the rest of the movie or leave it for next time? Anyone? How many here they are from abroad, like not from USA, from different country? How many of us here? And I'm talking about Discord, not uh, Ramble. Ramble, we will ask them alone. Not from the state? Okay, from East Asia? From the coconut land? You people eat coconut, don't you? From England? What the time now in England? Why you are awake? People in England is awake. What is the time in London? London, local. It is 2.41 a.m., man. What are you doing? If your wife, she find out that you are listening to me at 2.41 a.m. Do you know what will happen to you? Seriously. You better leave immediately before she find out. I'm just advising you. It's up to you, you know. I'm single. I'm safe and secure. Nobody care. I stay until the morning talking. <laughs> I don't, nobody, that's it. But you, you married men are just unbelievable. You are, that, that's it. You're, you're gone. You're history. The Abdul is a slave of Allah and a slave of four women. <laughs> there's a there's a Abdul. He met his friend in the park. He said to his friend, how are you doing? He said, man, I got married and my life is horrible. He said, why? He said, my wife, she is so strong, man. I don't know what to do with her. I don't even dare to leave the house without her permission. He said, Tim, what are you talking about? Seriously? He said, yeah. He said, you should see what I do to my wife. The other guy said, what do you do? He said, I'm, I'm, I'm the man, you know, I am in control. When I scream at her, she starts shivering. The guy he said, you know what? I don't believe you, really. You? Are you serious? He said, okay, you don't believe me? You want to go with me home, see? He said, okay, I will go with you. So this uh, first Abdul, he said, okay, you know, you know let's go. The, he went to his house and he opened the door. His wife is inside. He, you know, he screamed, make the hot water ready for me. He told the guy whispering, she will prepare the water for me to wash my feet. The guy, he said to him, and she said to him, okay, honey, okay. The guy he said to him, mashallah. What the heck? She will wash your feet? And she, look how she's scared. The first Abdul, the guy who's married in the house, he said to him, okay, I showed you, right? Now it's time for you to leave. So I went out. He went to open the door to leave. His wife, she screamed. He said, where are you idiot going? The hot water almost ready. Come and wash the dishes. <laughs> Come and wash the dishes, you idiot. Where are you going? The hot water is ready. Almost. Oh, boy. And this is what happened with Abdul Muhammad when he married to Aisha and Hafsa. They throw tomato and potato at him. Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan. Mayday, mayday. I hope that this video I've played for you will not affect you and affect your heart and make you convert to Islam after this amazing description of heaven. And we beautiful just Prophet Joseph Yusuf alayhi salam. So listen, you drink the water, let us go back. You will be 60 meters tall very white 60 meter like adam very white 33 years old like jesus and now your your face will look like joseph because joseph supposed he was very handsome remember the quran the story says that the women when they saw joseph because he's so sexy and you know it 
when they saw him he was like walking next to the swimming pool and they were like chopping potato with their knives and they cut their hands brothers sisters do you see how men they can make men women go crazy they cut their hands literally and they start like almost like they cut their hands literally like they cut that the whole hand not only like a, a, there's an injury no 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 i mean the knives is going through their skin and they did not even notice isn't it this amazing So when you go to heaven, you will be looking or you will look like Joseph. Isn't it this is the dream of every one of you? You first will become so white. What if I like to be black? What's the problem? No, no, no. Islam is not racist religion. You know? No way, no way. So you will be very white because in Islam only are beautiful and good looking only if you are white. It's a must. Uh, <clears throat> Let us see. Actually, you can go to chapter Yusuf, the chapter of Joseph, you know, and you will see. Uh, even Muhammad, he described him. And he said he was a very uh, beautiful and uh, like one of uh, one of his kind between mankind. Uh, yeah. Let us see here. Even they say that Yusuf, he have the beauty of half of the universe. Yeah, stories, right? Uh, even Muhammad, he said, he was the most handsome man between all mankind. Uh, uh, Muhammad, he described his belly bomb that it was a small, which is very sexy. Uh, uh, but then... Uh, the Muslim they start saying no Muhammad was more sexy yeah anyway so you will be you will look like uh, you will look like Joseph what do you want more I don't know for me I like to look like Zach and Nike because all what we need to do just to look I speak like him I uh, recite the Quran like him, memorize it. So all what I need is the beard, which is weird, and the look. But then, sister, this is first of all Christian prince, and let me introduce myself. This is me after I went to the heaven of Allah, and now you think I'm like a naik. But the truth is, I am Christian prince himself, a person. It was, brother, what happened to you? You know your voice. I mean, you, but you look like Zakir Naik. First of all. Allah is capable to make me a day with. And I ask Allah whatever I with. The Quran said whatever they with they can get. And it was my wish to look like Zakir Naik. Okay, that was your wish to be like Zakir Naik? Exactly. That is a good wish for sure. You know? <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> I know, uh, you know, I know a story. This is a true story, you know. Uh, there was a... Uh, uh, 12 Arab, they look so bad, like Christian prince. And they were digging in the ground, looking for a treasure. And then they found a ball. And there's a genie inside it. They opened it, the genie came out. He said to those 12, I can grant you 12 wish. 12 wish. 
What do you want? The first one he said, I want to look like Prophet Muhammad. The genie said, okay. He hit him in his face and he made him look like Prophet Muhammad immediately. The second one, he looked at the first one, man, he looks so good like Prophet Muhammad. Scary. So he said, okay, me too. I want to look like Prophet Muhammad. So the genie hit him in his face and he made him look like Prophet Muhammad. The third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, all of them, and each time they ask for the wish, the genie, he have to slam them in their face in a very heavy hand to make them or to make their look change. The last one, the last one, who still looked like Christian Prince, and actually this was me, I said, he said to me, the, the, the genie, he said to me, hey, uh, CP, what is your wish? I look at them, what the heck? I said, you know what? My last wish is make them all look like me back again. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. So the angel, he started, I mean, the genie started hitting them in their face one after one until he made them all look like me. And by the way, it's a true story. In case you don't believe me, may I like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy look at this i mean what is this this is a story not even good for kids what the heck is that you will be 60 meter tall and uh, you will drink the water and the water it's the water will make you not allah look look the fountain of youth you drink from the water you start like it's like alice in the wonderland anyone watch the movie alice in the wonderland anyone anyone knows the movie Hey, people in Rumble, wake up. Did you see the movie uh, Alice in the Wonderland? Those guys in Rumble, they are, they are asleep. Yeah, well, I mean, what you can say, I mean, still Joe Biden is the president. So why they will not sleep? They will wake up a year from now. <laughs> uh, I hope he will not be a president a year from now. That would be horrible. I mean, we will be sleeping like a turtle. Oh boy. Anyway, anyway, guys, aren't you bored of me? Seriously. Do you know why you are not getting bored when I talk? Anyone knows the secret? Anyone? What is the secret that you are not getting bored when I'm talking? If you listen to someone else, after five minutes, ten minutes, he will be out of conversation, nothing to say to you, and he will be bored. What is a secret you can still listen to me? Let us take the first guess. Who can guess? Hmm? You love my sense of humor? Selfish. He don't love me. He love the sense of it. See, I told you. <laughs> May I like <lecress> you? <laughs> so what is the reason? Tell me why, why you, you don't get bored. There is, a, there is a secret. I will tell you. I drank from the fountain of Allah. Right now, I'm getting taller, smarter, prettier. Prettier. <laughs> Do you see the <coughs> do you see how nice this water? <clears throat> I mean I wish I can get it like two drop man Allah can you give me just two drop for the sake of the shin of Allah? Just two drop. I mean just maybe I will look like a little better. So there's a woman, she will marry me. What the heck is that, man? So you drink the water, you will become six meters tall, and you will look so good like Joseph. But here the problem with this story is the following. I don't know if any of you notice. Huh, let me give you a chance to think. Who noticed the problem? Let us say this story is true. What is the problem with this story now? If it's true that you will go, you will be 60 meter tall, you will look like Joseph, you will have the age of Jesus, and you will be very white. Who noticed what the big problem, the biggest problem? 
Anyone? Who notice what is the biggest problem in the story? Imagine it's true. Forget about how stupid silly it is. Let us say it's true. What is the problem if this has happened for real? Anyone notice? Exactly. Thank you, Joey. Joey is a smart. I imagine we are in a place all those billions, they look like Joseph. So now the women in the heaven, they look the same. All the whore, they look the same. They have the same eyes, the same hair, the same voice, the same height. They say the same words. And now the men, they look the same. So how we even recognize each other? Who is who? If all of us, I look at you, you look like me. You look at me, I look like you. What a crazy cult. I don't know if I should continue playing this video for you. I'm afraid that all of you are being tempted now. Like envy, like a transgression, anything from you carry it with you from the life, from yeah. the dunya, from yeah. the lifehood, uh -huh. should be removed. Removed, that's it. The second spring of water you drink from, mm -hmm. that will make you so bright, so beautiful. Very white. And very tall. Mm -hmm. You will be like 60 feet tall. You will be like 30 or 60 meter. years old, just like... Isa alayhi salam <laughs> and we beautiful just prophet Joseph Yusuf alayhi salam that's it uh, and you'll be told just like the prophet Adam alayhi salam wow wow so we'll completely be different very handsome very beautiful and our clothes is not going to be wrinkled our hair will be very just like a silk our face it'll be so beautiful the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam saying authentic hadith awwal First people, they will enter the Jannah, the paradise, their faces just like very bright moon. You notice here that the first group who enter Jannah, they are more white than the rest. And now this is contradict what he just said. He said you will be white, you will be same height, you will look exact like Joseph. It turned to be no. There's only first first group is different from second group. First group is not the same. Do you see how this stupid Muhammad fabricates stories? Very bright moon, and the second group or the second zumra is just like a star. Imagine this. And here, notice that the second group supposedly they are less bright, so they are like what, like a star. Obviously, the God of Islam, he knew exactly what a star is. So being white like the moon is more bright than a star. Second group, who they are less believers, their reward is less, they will be like a star. And the people will enter, uh, they will have, as I said, 70,000 servants will just help. If your clothes will not wrinkle, you will never need to take a shower. Your food come to you. The Quran says, the, 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 the tree will bring the fruit to you. So what the servant for? Muhammad said, if you see a bird in the sky, you like it? It's going to be in your dish immediately. It's going to be cooked, served to you, Without like the, the 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 wind will carry it to you, cooked and ready to eat. So what the servant for? No laundry, no shower, no dirt, no clothing, no bathroom. M my clothes will never wrink wrinkle. So and food will come to me automatically. So what the boys for? Thank you. The moment you enter the jannah, by the way, there is a group of angels. 
زي متلنجو سلام عليكم طبتم فدخلوها سلام السلام عليكم برادر تبتم فدخلوها انا يسنجن Translate, translate. What the heck is that? They will tell you Salaam Alaikum. Tripton, that means it's good job. Well done. So they'll be worshipping Good the job, person. good job. Absolutely. If from the beginning you enter the Jannah, and there is a peace be upon you, say Salaam Alaikum, uh -huh. you did a good job. Good job. Tripton, fadkhuluha. Kind of like good job, good work. It is well. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. a good job. A good work. Yeah, because you really work hard yeah, to reach that place. Like, absolutely. You are Christian, the Christian, and the Jews, and the Hindus, and the Buddhist. Killing, raping, I mean, you work so hard, absolutely. Yeah, and you will enter the Jannah and imagine every person will know his house. What the heck? When you enter the Jannah, you, you will, every person will know his house? Would you not need GPS? You don't need a GPS. What the heck? You will be able to know your house without GPS in the Jannah automatically? Are you serious? You don't need a map, you don't need anything. The angels will take your servants, will take you to your place. Look, so what you are saying, you do not need a GPS, you do not need a map. If the angel will take you, like what, when you hear this, you think you go by yourself. You will not need GPS, you will not need, it turned to be the guy is taking you. <laughs> okay, the angel, he take me there, what will happen? in the Jannah and imagine with me here the moment you enter with your right foot right foot very important if you enter with the left foot brother you are screwed they will kick you out of heaven right foot remember a hey, brother when a Muslim he have intercourse with his wife do he enter with his right penis or his left penis I mean it's just a question as long uh, like uh, right foot I mean the penis supposed to is in the middle. Hmm. Shouldn't we be careful about this? Right foot? It's inter too. And this what they call it intercourse. So when you enter, what do you do? Which side do you put first? Anyway, let us not to go there. You'll find your couches. We arrive to the couch. This is the moment of the truth. What if the couch is not comfortable? <laughs> you arrive to what? You arrive to the couch? Are you serious? So now I went all the way to heaven to find myself in Walmart? Are you for real? You know, those Arab, they sleep in the floor. They never have a couch. So now the Muhammad, he said to him, you will have a couch, man. I'm serious. You will have a couch. The Arab boy said, man, couch? Are you serious? Uh, oh, I swear by Allah. You will have a couch. So you pray for this God five times a day. You get screwed. You wake up 5 a.m. in the morning. You know, you want to clean your bum. You clean your nose. You put even water in your nose. Look how stupid and ugly. It feels so bad. Try it, try it. Try to put water in your nose and see what it feels. It's so disgusting. And now, I'm going to get my couch? That is just amazing. Imagine with me here. The moment you enter with your right foot, you'll find your couches. And you lay down. What are you going to see, you think? You're going to see... The ceiling of your place, if your the, the, your place in the Jannah, your castle, yeah, it is the throne of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No way! Part of the throne of Allah. We are sitting under the ass of Allah. No wonder it smells so good. <laughs> and look at the contradiction. In the beginning of the video, he said, "There's a door. You open it, and then you go, and you sit around the throne of Allah, right?" Did he say that? People, didn't he say that in the beginning of the video? That when you open the door, the mask will cover you, 
and then there's a chair and the chairs around the throne of Allah it turned to be no now it turned to be your house is under the throne of Allah and this is how you know that the author of the story is just a, a, a this is just a mule I mean how stupid how low IQ the one who make the story and how one the one who tell the story and the one who believe in the story you cannot go from your door and sit around this, this a throne of Allah and now you are saying to me you look up in your house you are under the throne of Allah and by the way the Quran says that the throne of Allah the size of it is the same size of the heaven and the earth so how you go and sit around the throne of Allah if, and you are in the heaven I remember here the story confirms something else. Let us see of you who was going to think about it. Something very important. Did they say that you will be sitting around the throne of Allah? Did they say that? And then you will see the face of Allah? Where is Allah? Allah is above the throne. But isn't it this is, he said, this is a room, a hole in the heaven? And the Muslim, they keep saying to us how God can enter his creation. Do you see why we find Islam very stupid and very silly? Who in the world gonna believe in such a garbage? And people are dying for this. War happening for this. Millions of people around the world is struggling for this. Such a garbage. Any Muhammadan? No Muhammadan today? What is today? It is Tuesday. Where is the Abdul? There is any like, you know, there is a, like a movie or something like women wearing skirts somewhere in Discord or something. In the Middle East, in the old days, this is long, you guys, be, you were born, like, century ago. We don't have, like, you know, a limited programs, like, in TV. So there was a Mexican, uh, but, you know, they, 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 like, they changed the sound, like, make it in Arabic. So there's a Mexican uh, series about a woman, she is so beautiful. If I say to you, I'm very serious. When this program is in TV, the streets are empty. Honest to God. The whole country is frozen. Nobody in the street. Just because the girl in this uh, series, supposedly she is very beautiful. It's amazing how naive and how silly human being is. I go on the street, there's nobody. You think there's like a, it's like a doom day, you know, there's nobody. I remember once I went to uh, a boy in, my, in the school, you know, I wanna, I wanna ask him, because I was fired from the school, so I don't know what will, they will do tomorrow. So I went to ask him, always they fire me. <laughs> I used to be fired one day, like one day, and uh, almost like every day. Like actually they fire you, fire you like three, three days in a row, and sometime one week. But usually the average is the three days they fire me. So anyway, they, I was fired, and I wanna know if I am fired again. Because sometimes they fire me before even I go back, you know. <laughs> Once I went to the school, I just get fired for three days. So I was away for three days, and now that is number four. So I came back, and I found my name in the, 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 the announcement for a student. It says he is fired for the coming three days. I said, I went to the principal, I said, I, I, I like it that I'm fired, but what exactly I did? He said to me, you did throw ink on the rope of the chemical teacher, the chemic teacher. 
I said, but uh, sir, I wasn't here. I was fired for the last three days. He said to me, is it hard for someone like you to come to the school and make nobody see him and throw the ink at the teacher? Is it impossible? I look at him. I said, I agree. It's not. <laughs> so imagine the donkey, they are obsessed with me. Anything happen wrong in the school, they fire me. It doesn't matter who, even if I'm not there. I am in the school. I am not in the school. I get fired. <laughs> and what? Is it impossible for someone like you to come and make nobody see him? I thought about it like, man, that's not impossible. <laughs> so anyway, I was talking about this series. I went to this boy. I knock at the door. Nobody answer. Nobody opened the door. Nobody, etc. So second day I saw him. I say, hey, you know, I came yesterday to ask you. He said, ah, it's you? Sorry, we don't open the door. When we are watching this program, my dad don't allow me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Do we have any Mohammedan? No, no, this is not a Mexican TV. This is, uh, it's a Mexican series, you know. Um, it, and they, and they, make the, they make the whole uh, uh, series in Arabic. So they don't, they don't even use the original language of the series. The same as now they are using Turkish, you know, the same, you know. Salam Shalom. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say, God bless you. That I hope you open the live every day. Every time I see you open the live, my heart feel comfortable and relaxed. When I feel angry, I can just get your live and feel relaxed. God bless you. And I will drop right now. All right. All right. Thank you. you. Thank you, brother. It's so fun and relaxing for our hearts. Be Christian. Love you, man. Thank you and God bless you. But it's it's uh, by the way, it's tiring for me to be here for many hours every day. I need to walk more. I need to go out. Uh, it's not healthy to stay for many hours, tons of hours. You know, we are not doing like one hour, two hours. Uh, you know, people usually they do go make a video, fifteen, twenty minute, thirty minute, and then they go right. But I stay with you for many hours. It's not easy. Uh, your eyes hurt, you know, uh, your body hurt. Um, I wish I can stay more, but it's not that easy, you know. Anyway, we love you, CP, not just sense of humor. Well, I think I'm, I'm thankful that you stopped there, like not only not like not just a sense of humor you're not saying not only like uh, uh, your bread and your uh, what you have in your fridge and yeah it's good that you stop there very good <coughs> you know the best uh, the best joy for us as a human beings is the gift of be able to be thinking enjoy thinking because anything you say is what your brain say and anything you see is what your brain translate to you so the more your brain is beautiful the more you see things in beautiful way or it can be even hurt the brain is the major let us say a tool give us the sense of anything around us. It is a God gift where we can examine the fruits when he said from their fruits you shall know them. It's a God gift to connect our eyes to what we see outside of our body to what is our inside our body which is the brain. It is so important that we have to feed our brain with something intelligent, not something stupid. 
It's the same as, you know, plant, uh, a human being needs food, right? But there is many kinds of food. There's a food we eat in the mouth that will give us the energy and uh, the vitamin for a healthy body. But there is something very, very, very unique. Is your brain, which mis can mislead you to go wrong and become a criminal, or make you do the right decision and become a wonderful person in the family, in the society. So we always we have to feed our brain with something useful. And what we do here actually, we are trying to gather to think, even though we like we make it a sense of a humor and funny. But in fact, I'm tickling your brain. So those are stories, because they are funny, and maybe I make them look more funny, so they will be attached to your memory. So I assure you now, if 10 years from now, you will remember those funny stories I said to you. Because there is something unique about the brain. There are certain things the brain store either extreme pain or a pleasure the one between it doesn't stay not for long so when we make you know we have a conversation together and I make you happy and you enjoy it that conversation will be stored those funny stories they are dummy they are stupid yes but they bring a pleasure for you and your love. And then the brain automatically will store it for a long, long time. You will notice that when you were a kid, there is a moment, for some reason, you cannot forget about it. I mean, from all your childhood, either this moment is very ugly or it was very good. Anything in between, you don't have the memory at all. It's gone. The unique thing will stay either unique as bad or painful or unique as a pleasure and here I try to do my best to make you have a unique uh, uh, you know uh, time so your brain can store those stories and you can tell them to your friends to your children and they will not be affected by such a garbage stupid cult it doesn't make sense even for an ant I mean even the ant is making Quran in this story in this book <clears throat> uh, I'm just reading the comment sometimes I turn my face away from the computer for a very simple reason to avoid keep looking for long at the screen all right Hello, my friend. How are you doing? I'm very good. Can I ask you something about the verse in the Quran? Go ahead. Um, I asked uh, a Muslim, tell me something what is beautiful about the Quran, one good thing about the Quran. Yeah. And she told me, like, what she finds beautiful is the last verse of the Quran about the chair. About what? The chair, the chair. The chair, the, the uh, okay, the chair of Allah? Yes, yes, it's, I think it's in the last verse in the Quran, and I think there was something wrong because Allah prays to Himself or something. Is this possible? All right, but where in the Quran, in the last verse in the Quran, is speaking about the chair? I don't know. Are you sure that this is uh, about uh, where in the last verse? The last chapter in the Quran is chapter one fourteen, and it doesn't something talk. Like Allah, e Allah, something like that. Uh, you need to remember exactly what she said because this is not the last chapter. Last chapter in the Quran is about, uh, you know, uh, superstition. So you say a certain word and that will protect you from the one who whispered to you. Uh, the Muslim, they believe there's a genie, he whispered to you, you know. But this is nothing to do with the, with the share of Allah. Maybe... Okay, okay. I will ask again 
Yeah. The other words where, where I find uh, for her is also about that, that the Christians, the Muslims, and the other group who play who praise to the stars, they all go to heaven. So what is the reason to be a Muslim if there's ten that everybody goes to heaven? Yeah, this one, uh, obviously Muhammad at that moment, he was in the beginning of his life as a, a proclaiming to be a self-proclaimed prophet, and he wanted all to accept him. Uh, so he said, Christians, Jews, Sabian, all, they will go to heaven and there is no worry. Uh, just to make them relax until he killed them later. Very evil plan, you know. Uh, it's like, you know, uh, uh, when uh, when uh, Putin, he said, I'm going to have my force to do uh, like a, a war game. I'm not going to attack Ukraine. Uh, and he assured them he's not going to attack. But in less than 24 hours, he was inside. So uh, Muhammad was playing the same game. Uh, he was planning for long term. Now, if, if I say to them, I'm going to kill you all, they will fight him. They will finish him. And he is not ready. So at that moment, he made everybody relax. Even those who worship stars, even the Sabia, a group of them, they worship Satan. You know, they believe Satan have a power of them and he is the Lord of, who is the God of this earth. Uh, if you remember the, uh, the Yazidi, uh, the Muslim ISIS, they kidnap their women. The Yazidi is part of those Sabi, and then they are Kurdish, and they believe in Satan. Wow. Yeah, so he is a promising people who believe in Satan. Like uh, the Yazidi, the, there is two, two group, major group. One of them, they have a book, it's called Kanza Rabba. Uh, and the other one, uh, you know, they have uh, uh, satanic scriptures, or let's say, you know, fictions, the same. Uh, but Muhammad, he promised all of them to go to heaven, as you see in this chapter, chapter 2, verse number 62. But all of this was for a very simple reason, just to make them relax, so they will not be worried about what is going to happen next. And as soon as he have an army, he killed them. He finished them all. But that contradicts everything or not. Like, if we come to heaven, you go to heaven, everybody goes to heaven, so why somebody should be Muslim? Like yeah, and this is contradict the Quran because the Quran says Allah accept Islam only. Uh, but the Muslim they will find a solution. They will say those Christians and those Jews is the one who they are following the true uh, Islam, true religion. But in the front of us it says it clearly. It says those who believe, which means the Muslims, and those who they are Christians, not some of the Christians, and those who they are Jews. Especially in the time of Muhammad, Muhammad he confirmed that the Christian and the Jews in the time of Muhammad they believe that God have a son. So how those people, if they are wrong, they will go, uh, uh, they will, they will, they will go to heaven. Unbelievable! Yeah. Could you trust me? Tell me also. And where it stands that Muhammad tried to make suicide, not only one time, but more times. Yeah, the, the hadith mentioned that, and this is additional proof. If this story is true, you know, you cannot trust any story in Islamic source, including the Quran. I mean, we don't know really if the Quran is even uh, who wrote the Quran. There's many studies, they, they come with the conclusion that the Quran never written in Arabic. It was in uh, uh, Aramaic language. Uh, but based on those stories, obviously Muhammad he have, is suffering from mental Ill illness. A person who tried to commit suicide is suffering from very, either very bad depression uh, or he is suicide for a reason. You know, maybe he believed that maybe there is, if he suicide, he will have a better life. Like some religion, they do that. But in the case of Muhammad, obviously it was a mental chemical balance in his head. Yeah, but she said, yeah, the first time the angel come, maybe he got scared. But I said, yeah, but it was not only one time he tried to kill himself. No, the hadith says he tried to commit suicide many times. And each time he go to the top of the mountain, the angel says to him, 
indeed you are the messenger of Allah and then uh, his heart will cool down which means three, three times to see the angel to know you are good no 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 not, not a three time many time many time he tried to commit suicide and each time he go up to the mountain to throw himself it doesn't say in the hadith how many time you know it doesn't say anywhere in the hadith where it, how many time like maybe four maybe five maybe three but for sure at least a three it's, it says actually many it should be more than three I always had one wish to ask you. I'm sorry, I just take a little bit over. But my biggest wish was always to ask you if you could only use one thing to show that Islam is wrong. What would you choose if you could only pick one thing? You know. Well, I I I don't prefer to go in that field. I have first to know who is talking, because each one he have different level of intelligence. So when before you talk to a person. You have to know who is. It's like you know, uh, uh, you have a guest, and one guest is a businessman. The other guest is a priest. The other guest uh, is an artist. So each one of them, he have a sensitive topic. You can affect him with. So we better not to go with one topic. Rather, we go and check who is the one. It's like a. You are a doctor. Do you give one medicine to everybody? No, you don't. Everyone, his solution is different. Everyone will be impacted. Like there is a person who uh, he feel for children. He get hurt if somebody, uh, if he hear somebody hurting church, uh, children. This person, you will tell him about Muhammad being pedophile. Someone, he laugh at uh, stories, funny, stupid stories, like uh, the flying carpet. So everyone is different, uh, and you have always uh, to be, let's say, vigilant and choose carefully what medicine you give to everyone. There's that's no. That's a very good answer. Yes. So you can learn really how to talk with people. That's even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anything in life, actually, we have. Uh, let us say you are married. You know. Uh, when, when you say you are married, okay, that's mean you are married to a woman. But is all women are the same? No. Right? So you, you learn about your wife, what she like, what she don't like, uh, what she appreciate, what she don't appreciate. But it's not necessarily that all women, they appreciate the same thing or don't like the same thing. So uh, you, uh, life around us uh, is the same. We have to learn about the one we talk to. Listen carefully first to who is talking to you, how, uh, what kind of logic he has, uh, how deep he is, how shallow he is, how smart he is, how stupid he is. Uh, and then based on this, uh, you choose where to go. Maybe, maybe even you choose to go nowhere because if some, someone is so stupid, uh, you cannot win an argument with someone is so stupid. You know? You cannot. Yes. All right. Thank Th you very much. It was very informative and very good for me. Thank, Thank you, Christian. Thank you. God bless you. Do you want to say anything, C? Uh, quick question. All right. Uh, you talk about talking ants, but uh, I came across speaking wolf. And in some of the hadith, it's short, but in some articles, the English is short, but the Arabic part is long. And then there's also some stories where the wolves like uh, have a lot to say to Muhammad. Do you? Yeah, but you know, uh, 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 there is uh, there is uh, there is many stories about Muhammad. As an example, even there is a story about the lizard converting to Islam, saying shahada. Uh, but I don't use them much. Uh, because uh, Muslim, they can deny, they can say it doesn't say so, it's not true, this is fabricated. So I prefer to use the ant because in the ant story, it's proving many things. Number one, that the ant is making Quran because Allah Himself is quoting the ant, right? Number two, the ant does not talk. 
Ants are deaf and they are mute. So, so, so here you, you hit many and Muslim, they have no choice to say, uh, this is da'if. So the story about the wolf, you know, uh, witnessing to Muhammad that he is a prophet of Allah, uh, you know, all obviously those all are is fiction and lie. Why? Because the Quran says clearly Muhammad has zero miracle. So how those miracles only can be found? Why this story is not in the Quran? How come the Quran speak about Sulaiman speaking to the ant, but the Quran does not speak about Muhammad speaking to the wolf? Correct? Yes. Obviously, those, those stories are fabricated long after Muhammad. Nobody knows actually who is the one who came with them. Uh, and actually, according to Muhammad, there's a hadith says that before the day of judgment, animals would talk to human, you know, normally, like it's not like a technology, uh, like a, a, like a lions will talk to you, and you talk to the lion, all right? Uh, but Muhammad, he say crazy stuff. But obviously, the Quran confirmed that Muhammad have zero miracles. And all those stories, and all those stories are invalid. And it, like I mean, you know, we show them a very uh, authentic hadith, and still they say it is daif. But in the case of the Quran, can they say it is daif? <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the cow will speak. The 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 lion will speak. The, the 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 wolf will talk to you all those stories but the muslim they can't play with them they can say what this is in the book of al-bidaya and nihaya oh, who care you know they can play uh, even when you show them authentic but quran is something they cannot deny and they can run, they cannot run away from it all right okay all right thank you and by the way, it's better if we use Discord and we use a name. I mean, why we call ourselves J or D or A, C? You give yourself a name so we can read it. Like I say, okay, you know, I don't know what to call the person. Give yourself a name, full name. So we can read your name when, when you join us in a conversation. I know we have uh, like limited uh, letters, so you better use them all before it's over. Somebody will take the letters before you take them, huh? Be careful. Yeah. Anyway, I think we have enough for today, did we? And I hope people in Ramble, they have a good time with us. Uh, how was, how is the broadcast in Ramble, guys? Is the image, is it clear? Do you have any lack of video or audio in Rumble? Because now I'm using a new program, which I think is good. All right. All right. So I want to say thank you. And uh, we pray that we have a good time and we learn something. Uh, always we learn from each other. Uh, sadly, I don't learn from you too much because mostly I'm the one who's talking. But I'm sure many of you can teach me something too. Uh, I believe God, He gave gifts. Even sometime a child, He can teach you something. Right? So be always humble and don't be so proud. Uh, when a person, He becomes so proud, that means it's a clear sign of stupidity. Uh, you might know. You might know way more than others. But still, you know nothing. However, we have to seek knowledge, improve ourselves, and yesterday should not be the same as tomorrow. Tomorrow should be a better day. We learn more because if we grow in grow in age, but we don't grow in wisdom, that means we are going down. We are not going up. It's uh, you know, it's like a, it's, it's like a tree is dying, you know. So, 
uh, uh, when we grow in age, maybe we lose many things. You lose the way you look like as young, uh, your health will not be the same, but there is one thing you should not lose. You should be growing in wisdom and knowledge. And this is a treasure you will never lose. You will enjoy, and it doesn't matter if your face have wrinkles, if your hair is a gray, uh, if you are a hundred years old, still wisdom is the most treasure you enjoy until the last day. So we pray that we will enjoy this treasure until the last day of our life because it is the only thing make a human being a human. Otherwise we will live like animals and we will die like one. So thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, we will continue next time we go. We will continue about the paradise maybe so we can love more. And until we see you soon again, God bless you. God is good. So is Jesus. Amen. See ya. Bye-bye.